Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Andy Robinson RC, and cheers for checking out our channel today. Do you know what I've got out of the corner of my eyes? It's whippy aerial view. Um, okay, so on today's episode, we have this uh, one-tenth buggy from uh, Radio Shack at Tandy, the Golden Arrow. Massive popular uh, buggy back in the late 80s. This is from a that 1987 and I think the Golden Arrow ran just into the 90s but uh, it was a popular RC a bit like the uh, Jet Hopper and the Turbo Panthers but uh, this buggy itself was um, licensed to Tandy and Radio Shack by Nico and if you're familiar with the Nico buggies uh, especially the one that this is based off that is the uh, Nico um, F10, goes under the name of the Nico F10 Bison, the Thunderbolt, and the uh, Sears uh, Lobo Wolf as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's also another one of these, I think, called the Sagata, and that is also by uh, Tandy Radio Shack. Completely different body, but it's the same underpinnings. And also as well, the Traxxas, you can say that right, the Traxxas Cat, also featured this chassis uh, but with a slightly different body i think there might be one or two parts different but essentially they are all the same car but uh, yes but most uh, popular was or me most recognized would have been the tandy radio shack golden arrow which we have here uh, oddly i'm filming these in reverse order i've already filmed part two um, of this uh, the video on this buggy I did that uh, earlier today because it was such nice weather I went out and did the running video for it and now I'm back here in the studio I'm now doing uh, part one for you as uh, we film this but yeah this uh, I found this this came to me from a marketplace Facebook marketplace and I've been hankering I must admit I've been more after the Nico uh, Nico F10 uh, to be honest um, but since I knew that this pretty much was the same vehicle I just came across the Golden Arrow and I thought I've got to get that uh, that looks so cool I love it uh, and I got this off a chap uh, I'm just going to call him John he might not want me to mention his full name um, so if you're watching this John uh, thank you very much for agreeing to sell me this I'm over the moon with it it's absolutely ace uh, very pleased with it overall the condition on this is super as well considering this is now a 34 year old buggy now uh, bear with me we're just going to uh, get rid of the box and whatnot and have a, another look so move the uh, gym the raptor out of the way hey um okay now we'll have another look at the buggy in a sec now again i don't know why it's a rubber band there it did come with its oh, dear me uh, with its original box, as you can see, a uh, bit tatty, it's been taped in a few places, but uh, it's not the bo worst box I've ever seen. And again, you've got to consider this thing's like 34 years old now, so it's in good nick. So obviously the car is out of it, um, but as you can see here, it's got its original aerial tube, it's got its uh, tools that it came with. I'm not actually sure what that one's for. I've not found out yet. It must be for something. Uh, I think it's for the wheels. I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know what it's for. Not sure actually what that one's for. If someone there can tell me in the comments, that'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, clearly it isn't for the wheels because uh, this one is. <laughs> uh, and a little plastic hex wrench to do the wheels on it. Uh, so that's cool. And then you've got the Radio Shack. And this is a NICAD, this is the uh, 1200 mAh battery, 7.2 pack. Now, this does still work. I'm not sure how good it is, but it does still work. As when I was looking to buy this, uh, John, the fellow I bought this off, he um, gave me a quick demo via a little short video clip to show me it was all working. So it comes with its original battery. And... Again, here we have the little charger for it as well. Actually, I'm not even—I'm not sure it might be. This might be the original charger, but I've seen some slightly different ones. 
uh, but you know it's got the Tamiya plug on it. It says Archer on this, uh, but I, I, pres I presume it is the proper charger for it. Um, so it came with its battery, its uh, original tools, a charger, and the original box, which you can see. So overall, very pleased uh, to get all those bits. It's always nice to have all the little things come with it. Didn't come with instruction manual. Uh, those are easy enough to get lost. Um, but there you go, not the end of the world, but still, uh, it's cool. This one is on band one, 27 megahertz. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this down here for a minute. Okay, so as you can see, look at that, how cool is it? I love that. So that is the, uh, it's a frame buggy on top, but that is the Golden Arrow by Tamiya. By Tamiya, I'm so sorry, Tandy Radio Shack. I've got Tamiya stuck on my brain half the time. I was thinking about the running video I did earlier. Now in that video, which you will see uploaded after this one, we pit the Golden Arrow against the Tamiya uh, sort of Super Dragon or Hornet and the, the Tamiya RX Fighter Buggy Memorial Edition that just came out, which you've also seen in previous videos. So we did a, a three-way head-to-head. Now, actually, while I'm on the subject of that particular video, um, I will mention the fact that, um, like the other one I did, I might have made a slight mistake and missed a lap when the Super Dragon was going around. Now, the time it recorded on that was, uh, was it 1 minute and 16 seconds to do the four laps of the track that I made. Um, now, if I had missed the, the, the fourth lap and it only did three, then obviously the time's not right. So if I add, if I, um, average the, the uh, amount of seconds it took to do a lap, which is about 35 seconds per lap, um, then we're, we're roughly, was it 35? Yeah, yeah, average of 35 seconds per lap then it should have done a time at about um, 1 minute 41 or maybe just under 1 minute 38, around that sort of time. And its total time was 1 minute 16. Um, so it still would have finished in the finishing order of the three buggies, but it might have just been a bit closer to one of the other buggies. Now, that's all I'm going to say on that. You'll have to watch that video uh, when it's, uh, I release it. But it was certainly good fun to uh, go head to head with all the buggies. Anyway, back to this. It is a rather cool look at that. I'm absolutely loving it. I mean, it is in really good nick. It's certainly the best one I've been able to see uh, that's not on a picture. Um, I've come across these before, at like boot sales and things in the past. Uh, certainly not been as good as this one. There is a bit of scuffing to the roof. Unfortunately, but that's what happens when it gets rolled, I suppose, when it gets played with, which is what it, it was intended for. Now, this would have been quite a dear toy back in 1987. Certainly, I'm guessing, certainly pricier than maybe what you could have bought a Tamiya Grasshopper for. But still cool. I mean, it's a very similar design. You've got the live axle or beam axle across the back. Uh, though this has a 540 motor and the Grasshopper would only have a 380. Um, to say the Hornet also had the 540 as well. Um, and but unlike those, you did need, um, well, I say you did need some of those other ones, early ones would have had the four cell pack for the steering. This has four cell, four double A's in there. In fact, I'll just open it for the steering as well. But this does feel a bit heavier in general compared to what the Hornet or the Grasshopper would have. There you go, there's your four batteries there to the power the steering of course now if you had BEC uh, radio gear you would have done away with those anyway but they came in much later but yeah as you can see there if you look under your Traxxas Cats Nico F10s Thunderbolts Bisons Segatas and uh, whichever variant you have you'll see it's a very similar layout underneath and uh, some of the parts are interchangeable Okay, but yeah, I mean, the tyres uh, they are pretty good on this. They're not perished in anything. And I thought, oh, they're quite supple. 
but after running this uh, they, they were probably harder than i realized and again you, that comes through on the video now as i said it's in super condition but um which we didn't realize when i purchased it which was no one's fault really and um, it's very hard to notice but uh here on the front uh, sort of wishbone there just where the pin goes through to hold on the steering knuckle and stub axle it's cracked off there at the other side so you we, we're getting a, a bit of excessive play uh on that side so whenever i uh, pick the buggy up the wheel drops slightly more now i've run this and it runs absolutely fine still drives great so it's not affecting uh, the performance of the car but i think if it did take a massive wallop on that side uh, then you're going to need to replace the part and then you've got to find a spare now they probably will come up but probably not overly often i did find one on ebay last night but um it was it was he was selling a pair and one was broken it was the side that i would have wanted um but there you go one will come up eventually and um, so it can be replaced also you can put bearings in the front wheels and i think you probably get some in the back you probably could do the whole gearbox as well if you can get it apart uh, which i'm sure you can there all to be screws in the back so you could ball raise the whole thing as well this is still on its bushings uh, so in performance would be improved that way as well um but yeah uh, it is really cool uh, i'd love to have a go on this thought it was excellent now i really as well I'd love to be able to keep this in the uh, collection, but I probably won't be able to, unfortunately. So it's probably going to have to get moved on. Um, unless I can convince myself to let go of one of my other cars and keep this one instead. But yeah, but I wanted to get one of these on the channel so I could show you guys because I think it's it's rather cool. I do like it now. I am liking that a lot, I should say. Um, so yeah it's a bit it is from that it does that term does get used golden era of um, rc cars but you know just as the hornet and the grasshopper are uh you know along with other tamiers from that time period uh, there are other cars made by other manufacturers that are still iconic like we mentioned the the jet hopper uh the you know the Nico turbo panther the you know the uh, teo uh, jet hopper uh, I think Tyco, but a bit later, the Tyco Wild thing. Um, but yeah, things like the, the Golden Arrow, uh, you know, they were iconic. Uh, and uh, buggies of all of that time period. This just fits in a little closer to the, what I call the, the hobby grade uh, cars. It's, as I say, it's a full one tenth scale. And it has, you know, similar tires and layout and look to the grasshoppers and hornets and things like that by tamir so yeah um yeah obviously i've mentioned tamir quite a bit but it, you, you can compare it to them and relate to them quite well but um there you go i just thought i'd show you this i think it's absolutely ace another shot of the underneath but yeah i think that's so cool so there we have it, uh, the uh, Tandy Radio Shack Golden Arrow, that is cool. cool. Yeah, and also again, I hope you uh, like this video and you'll watch our head to head video that will come after this one. Um, so yeah, um, much appreciated. So if you don't want to miss our next video, you can do this now. Subscribe. <laughs> yeah um my little dinky sign there but yeah if you want to see our previous content and future content please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell it is much 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 appreciated and i'm going to leave it here for now uh, so yeah see you soon take care and uh, we'll see you on the next episode see you later